Hey gang, Ronan here. As you can see in this game, I am playing the tier 10 pan-European destroyer Trump. The Trump is, well, it's a little bit of an enigma. Uh, I really struggled with it at first because I was trying to play it like a destroyer and I don't think you can play it like a destroyer, at least not in the, the traditional sense. If you get too close, it, you can easily just find yourself overwhelmed. It handles like a cruiser. It's not very fast. It doesn't maneuver well. And uh, you'll see what the top speed is on this thing. It's, it's not great. And you'll see that when you turn the rudder, the ship is just sluggish. It, it really is more like playing a cruiser than a destroyer. So what I finally decided was that I needed to play it like a cruiser and try to use cover as much as possible and use the airstrikes. Now, this was an early game for me. I hadn't played this ship too much. And you'll see some early drops with the airstrikes that are just horrible. But I got it dialed in a little bit better and was able to do some damage. But like most, most destroyers, at least in my opinion, the longer you stay alive, the better, because you become increasingly effective as the enemy team is kind of thinned out and targets find themselves are isolated and it's easier to chase things down, especially with something like torpedoes or airstrikes. And then this ship has both. Now, as you can see on the mini-map there, the torpedoes have a range of 10 kilometers, which is not great. And you're only throwing out, I think it's three per side. The reload is not terrible at 70 seconds. And the airstrikes, well, the reload on that, as you can see down there on the bottom of the screen, is only uh, 48 seconds. But it's going to load one and then load the other. And that's going to be true throughout the game. So you get 48 second counter on the first, and then a 48 second counter on the second. Now, both are loaded. Uh, I'm using the radio location skill on my commander in order to have some idea of where the nearest ship is because especially early in the game it's going to give you an idea of where the nearest destroyer is at in almost every case. Now I don't want to run nose in into a destroyer. You can see I'm getting a little bit closer but I do not want to go into that cap because if I get detected you know there's a lot of things on the bottom of the screen there you can see torpedoes, airstrike, got depth charges, a repair, uh, speed boost, and any aircraft uh, help. But one thing you don't have, a heal. Another thing you don't have, smoke. So when you're big and slow and no smoke and no heal, you have to try and conserve your HP. Now, I know the Holland's there, but do I want to fire? I'm going to just stop this here for just a second. Now, if I fire, what can shoot at me? Well, pretty much everything over here, right? And as I was just saying, 28,000 HP. Yeah, it seems like a lot, but this thing, this thing eats damage pretty fast. Um, so I opt not to fire, and I do a terrible job with the airstrikes, as you'll see. But it's okay. It's still early in the game, and my goal here is to just stay in the game and effective as long as I can. Now he juked me here. He juked me hard. I should have gone the second one ahead of that because he slowed down and then he accelerated again and I just missed completely. And as I said, I thought about shooting, but I know there's a Harugamo, a Z-52, kind of just ahead of where my ship is. And then I, yep, then I did the dumbest of things. And I want to point this out because I'm not immune to making mistakes. Trying to save the cap from being turned, he went dark and I just I just panicked, I guess, and put a shot out in the hopes of trying to reset the cap. But it didn't work. And so now I'm visible and he's going to get the cap anyway. So I'm using a speed boost and I'm trying to get out of there. And you can see that this thing does not maneuver all that effectively. And you're going to see examples of that kind of throughout the game. And, you know, please keep in mind, as uh, as I'm sure, and it would be easy, because I make a number of blunders, that this is a really new ship to me, and I'm just kind of getting the hang of it. So, 
But I wanted to get it out there because, you know, while there, I'm sure there are videos, I haven't done one. And there might be people who are kind of wondering, what is this thing like? What's it like? Uh, you know what? I, you know, I said, I know this. I said pan-European earlier. It's not. This is a Dutch ship. Uh, my apologies. I'm not sure why I said that. So this is uh, a part of that line rather than the pan-European line. And if, if you only watch the first couple minutes of the video, I may be seeing comments below. <laughs> and that's that's okay if that's how that goes. All right, so I'm moving into the cap now because I, I'm reasonably sure that Holland beat feet and got out of there. And I'm guessing he's probably over there helping kind of where the indicator is pointing. So I have to just make sure that torpedoes don't come through that gap and get me. So that's why I'm angled the way that I'm angled. It's really important, especially when you've got, you know there's a destroyer out there, that if you're closing on their position or last known position, that you try to angle your ship in such a way to avoid torpedo strikes. Now, we are, and there they are. Uh, we are over five minutes in. Both teams now have lost a ship. Uh, Jinan is not something I want to meet face to face. It has uh, Atlanta-like guns. Maybe I catch it coming around that corner of that island there. I'm going to try and secure the cap and then sit behind this island. I'm going to try and get close enough to be able to get some airstrikes on some things as you can see over there. But we'll see how that goes. I do secure the cap. Summers takes out the Holland. And despite our early successes, the team seems to be sitting back on both sides, really. Uh, the big guns. Slava, Kurfurst, and Montana for the Reds seem like they want to push up on this side. So I'm going to position myself to be able to hit them with some airstrikes. I have that island over there where you can see the Bilal that I can cross to if I need to. And then I could run kind of northeast at need. And then there's a second island back there. Now our guys have pushed up, their guys have pushed up, everybody was sitting back, and it's, you know, it's smart, early in the early going, sitting back, trying to get a feel for where all the bad guys are. But now I would say, uh, if we make a World War I uh, trench warfare analogy, the lines are pretty well drawn, so people are going to be positioning to try and make use of that, uh, the knowledge of where the bad guys are. As we lose our daring, which, you know, keeps things pretty even, we do have a little bit of a points lead because we've got the caps. But the bad guys are trying to secure the A cap. You can see the smoke there. We know there's a we know there's a destroyer or something in there, and it's the Kleber. And I don't see how he's gonna survive it. Now I'll tell you, Kleber, really tough to use this thing on. Because if he turns even a little bit as fast as he's moving, it's really, really hard to determine where he's gonna go. Is he gonna turn in or out? See, I've backed up to avoid torpedoes, but we'll see. And that's strike number two that totally wasted. Now our Summers is a gunboat, and he can finish off that Kleber. But you can see he's eating damage, too. I'm going to get over here behind this island. And see if I can help on this side. Now, the bad guys don't know where I'm at right now. They haven't seen me for a while. You can see Fool of a Took, uh, Lord of the Rings reference, which I greatly appreciate. Asking where everybody is. Well, we've got a lot of ships right now sitting in the Bravo cap, and i got to guess where the Slava's going to be. And this is the point of the game where I start to kind of get the hang of this whole air strike thing. See if I can catch him coming around that corner. Seven non-pens for zero damage. That's a little disappointing. Now, if you get this ship, you'll see that the penetration values on these on these airstrike bombs not good. So really, what you're trying to do is you're trying to start fires. Now, I think those landed too far forward, and they landed on deck plating, which was too heavy. So 
just like with Destroyer HE uh, gunfire, the goal is to try to hit superstructure. And I'm learning as I go. Now the Genon, I'm going to land a decent shot on the Genon. Now I don't want to get spotted by him. You can see the Balao torpedoes there. And you can see the Slava sending out aircraft trying to drop some things on the Balao. And I'm just trying to stay ahead of this push. I don't want to get detected. I've got five seconds until I have another airstrike available. Genon looks like he's stopping. Oh, and I should be able to finish off the Genon here. For sure. Now, if you didn't notice, it takes quite a few seconds for your airstrike to get there. So they really are a lot like trying to figure out torpedoes. Now we're down four ships, bad guys are down five. Our Kurpurst and Schlieffen, both really banged up. And they pushed so far forward, the Montana could finish the Schlieffen with one shot. Now I'm going to have to get in this cap. See if I can avoid getting hit by these Summer's torpedoes. I don't want to mess up his tor support torpedo strike. But I'd really like to be able to get an airstrike on the Kurpurst. See, he's turning out, he's trying to make a run for it. Eleven and a half seconds to get the airstrike there. That's a that's a pretty long while. And maybe I catch him coming around that corner. I'll just keep trying. And if I ever land a torpedo in this thing. Okay, I was able to hit the superstructure that time, do a little bit of damage, and did start a fire. So you could see six penetrations that was into the superstructure. And I've got 14 seconds and I'll have another one I can drop on him. Now he's letting that burn. Let's see whether or not he'll continue to let that burn. Eleven and a half seconds. That's a that's a long time. Another eighty-one hundred damage. Did a little bit better job of landing it in the superstructure, which I figured out as I was going here. And I should be able to secure the, the cap. Got Balao in here with me now, Summer's in here with me. I just have to avoid getting detected. Now, it would be easy to say, oh, you know, you haven't taken any damage, or what are you really doing? You haven't used your guns. Well, okay, all that's true. Bear in mind, new ship, trying to figure out the new toy. Where's he going to go? I think he's going to slow down there. Now that he sees the smoke, he's going to accelerate. And that time, definitely able to catch the superstructure. Start a couple fires and do a little bit of damage. And because he saw the smoke and accelerated, my torpedoes aren't going to do anything. But the summer's got him. And he's burning and now probably flooding. And Summer's flooding gets the kill. So we're down to six ships. Bad guys are down to six ships. We do have a points lead on the back of holding the caps. But we lose our crew first. Now the bad guys have a one ship advantage. And they've really closed the gap in terms of points. We're up by 54. Or excuse me, 56 points. And I'm going to try and get an airstrike on the Slava. Looks like he's moving to support whatever's happening in the Bravo cap. Same with Schlieffen. And he goes dark. So I'm going to have to try and get eyes on him here without getting myself detected. Now, oh, you know what? I think I, I'm just going to sit and I'm going to wait on Bilal or Summers to do some spotting for me. There he is. I think he's turning this way. I've got another airstrike in six seconds. Again, I'm trying to hit the superstructure. Sounds easy, but it's not. We've spotted an enemy submarine. 
two pins, 17 non-pins. But I did start a fire, and I'll put some torpedoes out here. Uh, maybe not. He's going to stop there. Eight non-pins. But now that I can see him, uh, in another 26 seconds, I'll be able to drop again. And that's if he survives this encounter with the blow. You can see those torpedoes moving in. And I'm going to go back center so that I can use that gap between the Alpha and the Bravo cap, that, which is kind of off to the left side of the screen there, um, to put torpedoes through. Their Schlieffen has secured the Bravo cap, and right now the bad guys have a point sleep. And I've got to try and hit the center of the ship in order to do any damage, but I don't know whether my airstrike's going to get there in time. No. Nope. Now, we're almost 15 minutes in. I've only done 51,000 damage, which is really not much at all. But you can see I've, I've landed 102 of these airstrike bombs. As Montana finishes off our Columbo, we're down to three ships. Bad guys are down. To, we're down to two. The bad guys are down to three. We still have a points lead, but uh, it's a little bit of an uphill battle. Now, it's really tough for the bad guys here because they've got two battleships and we have stealthy things. So they really need their uh, Harugamo to spot for them. But the Harugamo instead goes for the Delta Cap. Now, maybe he decided, and maybe rightly so, that there wasn't enough time to get up here and help. Now, you can see Kurfurs is actually reversing right now. But there's also a Montana. So I'm going to get up here closer, but I'm not going to go running into the Bravo Cap. Now, you can see the Delta Cap is flipping, and that's fine. And that does kind of put could put the good guys over a barrel because with four minutes remaining, he's going to secure that cap. We're only up by 61 points. And that could make the difference. That could win the game for the bad guys. So I'm right now, I'm realizing we're going to have to sink one of these battleships. You can see the torpedoes from our Balao headed toward their crew first. And I can see where he's going using the torpedo indicator. And I've got to try and hit the superstructure. I'm going to stop right here because I do not want to get detected. And now that that delta cap is secure for the bad guys, Harugamo will presumably be heading this way. And I do manage to do 13 pens, 21 pens, and another torpedo from the Balao finishes him off. Let's see if I can catch Montana as he moves in. Now, the Montana knows where the Balao's at, at least roughly, because he just watched the Kura first get sunk by the Balao. So he knows the Balao's out that way. So he's going to use this island that you're looking at off to the right side of your screen as cover against the Balao, but he, he's not going to be able to get cover from me. And I've got an airstrike in two seconds. It's just out of my range, but he's, because he's going to use that island... He's putting himself where he can eat that. Now, I probably should have been reversing the other way here. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to do anything to him here. Eh, two non-pens. And my torpedoes are not going to make the mark. But he knows that I'm here. And uh, presumably he's telling his Harugamo, yeah, that was really close. Now, with two minutes... And three cap to one advantage, we know this is going to be a close thing, right? He's got 40,000 HP. I have a better chance of sinking the Harugamo in terms of HP. So this game, I'm already realizing, is going to come down to the wire. Now, Montana looks like he's slowing down and intends to get as close to this island as possible. And I'm going to take advantage of that as Balao moves center. And I'm going to be able to hit the superstructure here. Should get some penetrations. And I did start a fire, which you can see is burning. I'm just going to get myself out of here, because right now, Harugamo is probably close enough to get torpedoes into this gap. Speaking of which... And in 12 seconds, I'm going to have another airstrike. Even if he starts reversing, I've still got the ability to hit him with a strike, and I think I'm out of torpedo danger here. He's still inching forward just a hair. 
You can see Balao torpedoes and my torpedoes as I just kind of get completely out of harm's way here. Another three penetrations. And Montana is in big trouble. As I land a torpedo and then Bilal finishes him off. And that is the game. Now this was this was a fun game to play. And we're going to make an attempt at finishing off the Harugamo. But um, I'm going to pause this here for just a second. Just kind of give you my thoughts about the ship. So um, the guns on this ship are decent, but not great. You don't have a lot of guns. Um, it seems like seems like you do, but really the front turrets are going to be the ones you're going to be using the most, especially if you're playing the kind of uh, cruiser-like style. It's not going to be often that you're going to get the rear guns in play, and when you do very often, at least in my experience, you're going to find yourself outgunned. The reload on these guns is really not terrible at 4.6 seconds, but because I think at this point a lot of players are aware of how easy this ship is to do damage to, it sits up fairly high on the water, it's easy to hit, I, anytime I've been spotted in this thing, I have found myself just getting shot from everywhere. So just keep that in mind. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly enjoyed playing this game. Congratulations to our Balao player, uh, Kazna. Uh, that's just a guess. Played a really strong game and was really kind of solely responsible for our victory. If you haven't already, um, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. I'd love to hear any comments you have, any feedback about the ship. Now, you'll see the guns here. Thanks a lot for joining me, and I'll see you next time.